So good morning once again. Can you hear me? You know, the ones in front of me, I'm sure you can hear me, no? Not sure. But the ones on Zoom, can you hear me? You know, can, you can give a thumbs up. We have a technical team checking. So all good? Okay. So welcome back everyone. No? I hope you have had a good time of prayer this morning. And you can see the setup has changed a little, no? like magic. But in this time of change, in this time of waiting, how was it for you? Now, how was this time of waiting? Just a, a, maybe it was a small little glimpse earlier of a time of waiting. Did it feel a little uncomfortable? Or maybe sometimes it's very agonizing to wait for someone. No? Maybe, you know, sometimes I thought I was very patient, but I realized not so much anymore. Because when, when you're waiting, it's like, when will the time come? No? But here's the consolation. That Mary continues to wait with us for the coming. Mary waits with us, no? As Paul said, we are never alone. We are not alone on our journey. <clears throat> Mary is here waiting with us for the promise to come into our lives. You know, really, while praying, just this, the passage that Paul gave us earlier on in Luke 1.45 really, really struck me. You know? Because when Elizabeth said to Mary, Blessed is she who believed that the promise would be fulfilled by the Lord. Right? And for me, while praying with this, just this line, it helped me to see really these two women, their faith and their hope, right? Their faith and their hope in believing that the promise of God will be fulfilled, even though it's not actualized yet, no? You cannot see, you know, you cannot see your baby in your stomach. You can feel, but it's not visible, but they believe. And that for me really speaks a lot of their faith, you know? They were waiting for time to unfold. Time to unfold the message of the angel Gabriel. Right? And in Mary's heart, how she believed and how she lived. How she lived with the attitude that the promise already has been fulfilled in her life. And many times, no? I don't know if you ask, what is the promise? Yes, Jesus, but... Voila, not yet there. We're still waiting, right? But also this promise is the promise of a journey. A promise of a journey to see the Messiah. The Messiah that is being made flesh in Mary's life and also in each one of our lives. Right? The promise wants to be made flesh in your life, wherever you are. But in my life, who am I? You know, I'm just a small Singaporean girl standing here. How? How can the promise be made flesh into our lives? Really, you know, I love this image very much, you know. How Mary's gaze is constantly fixed on the promise of God. Mary's gaze is constantly looking on the promise of God. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of the anxiety of our hearts, and even in division, right? And all these were very real. It's not just, it's not just an ideal that we talk about, yeah, chaos. It was very real in uh -huh. Mary's life, right? Because if you look at history, during her time, there was chaos in, in, the, in the community that she lived in. There was division in the world that she lived in. So it's very real in her life and we can see how much, you know, how much she trusted the message and how much her heart is really a heart of Advent that waits for the promise of God, that waits for the coming of God into their life, <coughs> her community, <coughs> the lives of her people, right? And so in this time of prayer, we will journey with other personages in the Bible, no? We also had a very adventurous advent. No? Adventurous advent. Can you guess who had a very adventurous advent in the Bible? 
Dun, 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 dun. Joseph? Mm, yes. And other people. Other people. Come on. The clue is here. Uh, the three kings. Yes. So we will journey with the three kings in this time of prayer, right? So by tradition, their names are Balthazar, Gaspar, and Malchon. So we will journey with these three men to see how they journeyed together in search of the promise. Yeah. And so these, these three kings are also, they are also called the three wise men. No? And something that really caught my attention is that they really devote a lot, a lot of their time to study, right? To study uh, different aspects of the world. They enjoy to philosophize. You no, know, Paul was saying she's a philosopher. No, she's studying philosophy. They enjoy to philosophize, to find out the truth, to find the science in the world, right? Chemistry, biology, what else? Physics, astronomy, many, many more. They enjoy, you know, they enjoy to have knowledge and to find the truth and wisdom behind things. And we see now that they left behind all that. They left behind all their books, all their studies, all the things that they enjoy in research to search for what they understood from this star to be the infant king of the Jews. They left behind everything, right? And they even prepared, no, we know, they even prepared very expensive and valuable gifts that is worthy of a king. Why? Now, why did they leave behind everything and travel the distance, right? Could it be because from their studies of astronomy, they saw this bright star. This star that stirred something into their hearts, no? It also disturbed them like, oh, what is this star? It is, they sense something. It's trying to tell them something, but what is it? They needed to go and find. They needed to go on this search to find the truth behind it. Like this star, this stirring in their hearts, made them to want, to want to search for something more in their lives, right? For something that they have actually spent all their lifetime in their research, in their studies, to fill their hearts and their minds. They want this star to fulfill that, right? And here's the interesting thing, no? They saw the star, but they don't know, they don't know the way, right? They read from the prophecy that, oh, it's in somewhere in Bethlehem, but they have to make the way. And they believe. They believe that by following this star, it will lead them to the promise. And so, like I said, they took expensive gifts and valuable, valuable gifts with them, no? So what are they? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, right? They brought these three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, to offer to baby Jesus. Now, what does these gifts represent? Or maybe we can also think, well, they offered gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What can I offer? What have I to offer to Jesus in my journey? Now, because while I was praying, while I was preparing, I understood that Yes, they, they brought, no, because when you go for a party, when you go to someone's house, you bring gifts, Diva, you bring food or something, no, you bring something. And so they just brought whatever they understood to be, I will give this to the king. But not only did they walk the way to find, it's along the journey that they discovered how these gifts really mean something. It means something. It's not just to offer barrel. These gifts represent something that they discovered along the way. And so, have you heard of this saying, no? Time is gold. Yeah? Time is gold. But have we ever stopped to think what time is? No. I ask you, how do you define time? If you were to give time a definition, how would you define time? One o'clock, two o'clock? Now is 10.45, Diba. Is that how you will say time? One o'clock, two o'clock, 10.45.
Okay, hmm. but what gives time its value? There is a value to time, right? Time is gold. What is the value of time? In Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, no? it says, The span of our life is 70. 80 for those who are strong. No? Maybe some of us are halfway mark. Maybe some of us a bit more but still look very young. You know, and sometimes I, I'm almost, almost lang, almost halfway mark, no? And sometimes I ask myself, oi, already halfway, no? One leg inside. But do I live my life as a gift? Do I live the time of my life as a gift? Or am I constantly chasing after time, no? Just keep running, just keep running. I just keep running the red race. But what? Now some will say, oh, time just creeps and crawls away, you know? Taking away our energy, taking away our youth, taking away our beauty, you know? Or some will say, YOLO, the young people, no? YOLO, you only live once. And that is very true that we only live once, no? But yet, Time doesn't stop to wait. No, time doesn't stop to wait for you. And we have been given the ability to seize and to treasure time. We cannot make time stop, I'm sorry. We cannot make time stop. But we can seize time and we can treasure this gift of time. No? Do you agree with me? Time is a gift. Time is abundant. No, it's there. But its value increases only when you spend it well. Libra, when you, when you buy a nice Chanel bag or Chanel perfume, it's very expensive. But the value is there. You spend well, no? I don't buy Chanel bag, I'm sorry. But I realize really, you treasure time when you spend it well. Time becomes you know, more valuable when you spend it well. When we learn to respect, when we learn to give others time, then it adds meaning and it adds purpose to our lives. Like time is not about quantity. It's not how much, but it's quality. Quality of time. And so we do not know exactly how long the wise men took to travel from the east to Bethlehem, no? In a passage, maybe only three verses lang. But we don't know how long exactly they took to journey. But I imagine, no, maybe it's months, maybe it's years, I don't know, two years, I don't know. But I imagine that on their journey, it's not just to walk, 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 walk. But they discuss, Oi, where to go lang? Here or should we go straight? Go there, where to go? They were discussing. They were sharing. Like, uh, I don't know what do I think. Should, do we go on this journey? Do we not go? They were sharing their thoughts. They were sharing their feelings. They were maybe complaining about the tiredness from the journey. There were moments, I, I imagine, you know, there were moments they felt very discouraged. But because they traveled together, they encouraged one another. Come on, let's go. Really, this star. Let's go. Let's keep going, no? Let's keep continuing this search. We spend our time researching. Let's search for something. Let's search for this promise that this stuff is telling to us. No? And through this time that they spent together, relationships are built. No? Relationships are built on stronger foundations because of the shared memories they have, because of the, the situations that they live together. And these shared memories last longer, firmer than just sitting at home and philosophizing. Right? Now, many things are happening in the world now, right? A pandemic, typhoons, in the other side of the world, hurricanes, political unrest going on and on. But also in our lives, maybe family and relationship issues and many more. Many more issues that we face every day. And perhaps these are also wake-up calls for us, no? 
wake up calls for us to te 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 te. Time is short. What are you doing about it? No. Now I want to ask you a question. If you have time, Yira, if if you have time, what would you like to do for yourself? What would you like to do for your loved ones? No. For me, maybe it's to try something new. I want to try something new. I haven't thought of it, but once I think, I will share with you. No. Or maybe. I remember Ia, no? Ah, uh, she wants to go to the beach and relax, to watch the sunrise, the sunset. Maybe we can go to Manila Bay to watch the white, to see the white sands. Or maybe it's to spend time. No, you don't like the white sands? Okay, let's don't go there. We go somewhere else. Maybe it's to just simply spend that quality time to sit down and talk with a friend. You really have talk heart to heart. Really have that depth. A conversation. What will you want to do if you have that time? You know, a couple of weeks I had a light bulb moment. Ding ding ding! And I was having one of my classes, and my professors, my professor, very professional. That's right, professor. No, he have his earphones, his microphone, at the laptop, many many books behind. No, like who are in the library, but actually at home. And his child came up to him. No, while having class, his child came up to him. Papa. Who are you talking to? And just that sentence really like caught my attention, no? Because I realized it's true. He's just talking to a computer. He don't see us, no? But also day in and day out, every day we go to work. We have to run errands. We have to study. We have to do this, do that. We have so many things to do. Then we have little by little, no? Because we have so many things to do. We have this mindset. I have no time. I don't have enough time. If only I have thirty-six hours in a day, I want to have forty-eight hours in a day. You know, we have this mindset. I have no time. That we become very task-oriented. We just focus on the task, and we forget why. Why do we do all this? We just want to get the job done. We just want to meet deadlines. We just want to give our work, get our work completed. That we forget the whole process. We forget that it's relationships that matter. The people I work with, how I deal with it. You know, some of us work from home, and I think ever since this pandemic, I hear working from home. Increases the demands. Now somehow our bosses think twelve midnight. I still need to respond to him by email. Twelve midnight. I should be sleeping, not responding to you. Come on, but we give in, deh ba? We still okay. Wake up, type the email, and then go back to sleep. We have this. Um, because I'm at home, I need to work. I need to work. But we forget what is happening around us. What is happening in my community? No, what are my other sisters doing? I don't know because I need to work. We forget about our family members at home because we need to work. Do you think it's true? Do you think what I'm saying is true? That we become so focused on work that we ignore everything that is happening. And and, and I agree. You no, know, this year has been a year where we. We just tread on uncertainties every day. We become very careful, no? Every time we touch something, we spray alcohol. We clean our hands and etc. etc. Um, I I do that. Don't worry, huh? I always wash my hands, no? Or sometimes, you know, we we hear of news like, uh, someone close to us is being tested positive, mm, and then our hearts just jump a little, no? Not 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 that we are afraid a little bit, but we also worry, deba. We worry for the other person, not only COVID, but maybe cancer, heart conditions. Every day we are just treading on uncertainties. But also, you know, through all these uncertainties, I felt this invitation even more to fix my eyes on the star, amidst the chaos, amidst the uncertainties, to look at the signs of the time. What is God revealing to us? No, especially in this season of Advent, what is God revealing to us? Right, Advent is a time to prepare, 
a time to stay vigilant for his coming into our lives. It's a time of grace, really, no? that we can share this gift of quality time with Jesus, with Mother Mary, and also with others. Right, earlier, I mentioned that time is gold. No? Time is gold. It is also the wealth of relationships. Time is also health. No health, our health. Why? Now the second gift mentioned is frankincense. No, and frankincense is like aromatherapy. No, it has cleansing and healing effects in our body. Now, I don't know if you have ever thought that is my health a gift? Can my health be a gift? I, I, I think of my mom, no, because she's not here with me. I think of my mom, no, every time when she climbed the stairs, she's not so old, lah. But when she got, ayo, ayo, pain, lah. The knee pain, the back pain, everywhere pain, no. And so when we think of health, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? The aches and pains, the stress, no, work stress, family stress, all the stress. Or do we think of a holistic well-being? The well-being of my body, mind, and soul. You know, every year there are new trends, no? New trends coming up. The superfood, uh, there was aromatherapy. I remember maybe about 10 years ago, aromatherapy. I don't know if you have mangosteen juice. Uh, also, in mangosteen juice, chia seed. Now we even have malungai pills. No? We have the real tree outside, but we also have pills. No? Diet regimes to go exercise, to go diet, eat medicine. And people share. Uh, woo, people share enthusiastically about it. What is effective? This, this doctor no good. Don't go here. This one is better. This brand is better. People share what works well for them. And then we will go and try it. No matter how expensive, try because because we realize my health is important. I want to take care of my health. Because the level of my health affects my quality of life. No? So then the question is, we have aches and pains, no doubt. No, I'm, I'm very young. Well, not very, a bit young. But I also have aches and pains. But do we allow these aches and pains to limit us? I, today, I have neck pain and so I cannot walk. Huh? Why? Today I have back pain and so I need to sleep in bed and do nothing. Really? Does it, do we allow these aches and pains to stop us from doing anything? Or doing what we actually can do? No? I remember one day, I think last week or two weeks ago, I woke up, no, I, feel, I felt very anxious, like, yeah, I woke up late. Because... I wanted, I, the night before, I said, okay, tomorrow I will do this, 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 this. I planned already, you know? I woke up late. And then I was like, I, I, I don't know why, but I just felt anxious, you no? Know? And so, I came to the chapel and was spending some quiet time with Jesus. And suddenly, I just felt this sense of peace. You know, like, it's okay. Stay with me, you no? Know? And I understood from Jesus, no, it's not so much about what I can or I cannot do. It's not so much about what I have achieved and accomplished in this day. It's not so much about the compliments that people give. But how I choose to live. How I choose to care for this body. How I choose to care for this mind and soul that has been given to me. No, on the other hand, maybe some of us are a bit younger. We don't feel the aches and pains yet, no? But how about the aches and pains of our hearts? It's not only physical. Our heart also feels aches and pains. The grudging feelings that we hold on to. You know, sometimes I say, oh, I cannot, I cannot forgive this person because this person X and X have hurt me so much. You know, maybe one time okay lang. But again and again and again, ooh, it just gets deeper, no? And then I find, 
how Lord really sometimes I ask Jesus how again again it happened how can I I want to pero this pain in the heart this pain that causes our hearts to be hardened no we have some doctors on Zoom diba right? this calcification of our hearts medically is dangerous spiritually is dangerous as well and so how can we take care of this aspect of our health no unforgiveness is like a dark cloud no it just blocks out everything it blocks out the star that god is showing to us i like, do you do you feel the same or is it only me no yes no thank you <laughs> well i don't have an answer for you because i'm also on the journey myself No, I believe each one of us have our own personal journey to take, our own personal way to come out of this. But one thing that helped me on this path of forgiveness is not to be afraid. We are very easy to say no, but it is not to be afraid to talk to God about it. No, to talk to to God about the person we find it difficult to forgive. And little by little, as we talk to God, it becomes easier, you know. Again, God, but it helps. It helps, and I promise you, talk to God about it. No, I believe. I really, really believe. No, I I used to be a nurse, and I really, really believe that our health is a gift that no amount of money can buy. Nothing, nothing to exchange for in this world. No. So do you think also the three wise men fell sick on their journey physically mentally sick no for gamers abel i want to ask you or for those of you playing games no when your hp your health point drops to 10% do you feel a bit panic when your when your cell phone lang 15 warning okay lang 5% uy i need to find charger soon you panic a little no do you have the temptation to give up give up on the game lah give up and start a new start a new game 100% health point well for games you can you just press the restart button no but for our lives can we press a restart button can we restart our health back to 100% Not really, no. There's no restart button to press. Nowhere to press the restart button and play again. If not, maybe we will want to restart at the start of the year, no. First half of the year, we want to press the restart button already. But the reality is no. But the three wise men can show us that although their energy may be low, they never gave up on their journey. No, they didn't make a U-turn and go back home. they endured they endured through the journey and they fixed their eyes on what was very important what was essential to them they fixed their eyes on the star right they even took a longer route diba they went to the palace of herod they took time to figure out like hey this is the wrong place but they never gave up right They never gave up and they journeyed to the end. No, I was reminded of a friend who has who had been a great great witness in my life, no, and she passed away a couple of years ago. Her name was Margaret. And when I first met Margaret, she was the most cheerful, most friendly midlife lady I've ever met. Eh, and so at that point of time she was on remission from cancer, no? She had cancer. She was in remission. And when I met her, you know, I would never think that she had gone through all her chemotherapy and all that for her cancer. Now, unfortunately, after a few months of remission, the cancer relapsed and it was more aggressive. You no, know? but she continued. She continued to join us for school of the word. She continued to come to the house for prayer sessions, and she even brought her friends along. Really, she was. Sometimes she will go for her therapy, and she don't feel well. Sometimes she feels well enough to come. No, she comes and she brings her friend along. And in the last um, couple of months of her life, 
no, she, they realized that the therapy wasn't working. So in the last months of her life, she was thinking how to prepare her family, her fa beautiful family, her husband, very nice, very gentle, and her three young kids, no. She was, she had this desire to also journey with them and prepare them for her living. Now, so why am I sharing about Margaret? Because I realize our lives, our health is very fragile, no? Sometimes it leaves us no choice but to let go, right? It pains us definitely, no? It pains us to leave the people, to leave the things that we love, the things that we enjoy behind. But I realize also when we learn to live our lives well, even in the last moments, we touch the core and foundations of our faith. We see Jesus in our lives and in the life of the other. Now, Margaret will always tell us, no, thank you. Don't need to thank me later. Don't worry, Ja. No, no, she'll always say, thank you for your, the guidelines. Thank you for your life of faith. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She will always tell us thank you. But really, you know, I think she has been the one who really evangelized in the concreteness of her life situation. No? She embraced her limitations and she gave us the gift. She gave us this gift to really see a life with horizon, a life with perspective of the true life that awaits. A life how she fixes her eyes on the promise of God, on the promise of Jesus and the promise of life with a big L. Now, I always remember one of her last words was that pure water tastes so much better than her favorite soft drink. Pure water tastes so much better than her favorite soft drink. Because water was able to quench her thirst in the last stage of her life, no? When she was no longer able to take in any more food. Imagine, pure water tastes better than any sweet drinks that gives taste, no? And so no matter the state of our health, no matter the state of our health, we always have that capacity to live it as a gift. When we see it as a gift, not only for ourselves, but also for others. How do you value and give thanks for your own health, no? for your spiritual and your physical health? When we learn and when we know how to give, then we can receive this gift of love and forgiveness. When we know how to give, then we can receive. We can really receive the true meaning of love and forgiveness. Well, another aspect that I saw in Margaret and also in the three wise men was their resilience. You know? Their resilience to really persevere to the end to see Jesus because of love, right? Love is the greatest motivating energy in our life that keeps us going. Maybe for the three wise men, it's their love for wisdom, no? their love for truth. For Margaret, it's the love for Jesus and for her family. Resilience and love moves us, right? It moves us to face the challenges of our journey. The attitude of love and the strength of resilience help us to face the challenges, right? This, the challenge of this pandemic, knowing and trusting it, that God is with us, that he is making a way for us to be stronger, stronger in love. Now this love is so silent. This love, very unseen. Yet their, their stories are being told, right? Their stories are being passed down through generations, passed down through the years. This love in the silence, who knew? 
Who knew the life of Margaret except those around her? Who knew the journey of the three wise men except those who accompanies them? Who knew this couple, Mary and Joseph, that are journeying to Bethlehem, that they were bearing the Son of God? Who knew that the king, this baby, the promise of God will be born in their houses? Who knew that this star in the night sky will be a sign for us to be in his presence and to offer him gifts? Like all these little moments were lived out in the silence to love and for love. Now the question is then we can ask, do I see love in all that I live and do? Do I see love with the big L in all that I live and do? Now, Advent is a time of waiting, a time of preparing, a time of searching and a time of opening the path for God to enter into our lives. Right? Perhaps Christmas will be a little bit different this year, no? It will be different from what we are used to. It will not be as bright. It will not be as noise-filled not as extravagant as previous years, but perhaps we can use this time of the year to learn how to go back to basics. Go back to basics. Because it is in these basic moments that we can live out the true spirit and the beauty of a life of love. Because God is love. And we can live... This phrase, no? Luxury in simplicity. Where we see, taste, smell, touch and experience the fullness of life in, in its most simple and authentic way. Right? The three wise men were in search of something magical, something extraordinary. A king that is mighty and powerful in their own human understanding. But yet God showed them a different path. Now these three wise men asked, where is the infant king of the Jews? Let us also ask these questions in our hearts, no? And allow God to answer. Allow God to be the one to guide us with his star. Now it's daytime, no? <laughs> no stars in the sky. But the star is in our hearts, no? This star, allow it to shine in our hearts, to guide us. In this time of prayer, I invite you to stay in the silence, no? Don't go, don't use this time to go to the CR. Don't use this time to drink coffee. Don't use this time to check your phone, please. Because in the silence, this star shines brighter. In the silence, we see better. We allow this star to rise, to fill our hearts with delight and lead us. Allow this star to lead us just as it led the three wise men to see the promised king. Again, no, this image of Mother Mary looking down at the crib. Now, though the crib is empty, she has in her mind the promise of God that will be fulfilled. Now Mary, in her advent, widened the space of her heart. Right? She prepared a heart, she prepared a space for Jesus in her heart. May our advent journey also be a time to receive and to treasure the gifts of time, health, and love, just as the three wise men offered it to Jesus. Because when we offer it to Jesus, we also can offer to many who await for the promise of God. And so perhaps in this time, uh, we will have flash on Zoom, the prayer sheet and some reflection questions that we can reflect upon. And also we will give out the papers to you.